Dude, when I see a real estate agent make a mistake, like a big one, like a, oh man, I probably like violated my fiduciary responsibility to my client. Like I done messed up. You know what I do when I see that? I attack. I attack, right? They're like on the side of the road like, Ugh, please help me, sir. I need water. I walk up to them. I punch him in the face because that's my job. That's what you hire me to do. I ain't out there shaking hands, kissing babies with these other realtors. No. <laughs> I'm ready to get them in the freaking throat when they screw up. Why? Because that money that they are peeing away, that money belongs in your pocket. That's why you hire me. And today I'm going to show you how to take advantage of an agent who made a big, big mistake. We need to capitalize. Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. James Wise here. Today, I was hired by my client, uh, Troy. Troy's from Tampa. Troy, you're looking for some singles, some really low-cost singles. My company will then manage those for you, right? These properties in the market we're looking at, Ohio, much cheaper than they are in Tampa, right? So where are your boots on the ground? And when you hire me to be your boots on the ground, you hire me to work for you, not against you, right? Some turnkey providers, they're trying to sell you property they own, right? Well, a little mis, uh, misappropriation of uh, incentives there, right? Every dollar you make is the dollar they lose and vice versa, right? So what we do, we reimagine turnkey. We work for you, right? I'm like your lawyer, really. I'm your advocate. You're, you're Brock Lesnar on Paul Heyman. Although more appropriately in today's day and age, you're Roman Reigns on Paul Heyman. Folks, if you're new to Holt Wise TV, I'm like a big wrestling buff. I talk about it often. Does it usually translate to real estate? Probably not. I just can't help myself. I don't know. It's a thing. Anywho, Troy, this agent screwed up, dude. This agent made a big mistake. And I am going to show you how me and you are going to step into this deal, lowball the crap out of them because this, this, this mistake is an erroneous. <laughs> it's so bad. Such a problem. They're going to lose their seller quite a bit of money. Let's check it out. Man, I hate those other real estate gurus out there. Those real estate gurus that lead you guys to believe fairy tales, lead you guys to believe in magic, lead you guys to think that there's going to be genies granting your wishes if you buy their course or their program. Like there's going to be hot girls in bikinis just popping out. That's not the real life of a real estate investor. And here on Holton Wise TV, we give it to you straight. Welcome back. Now, not every real estate agent is created equal, folks. I happen to think I'm one of the best. But don't take my word for it, folks. Take the $200 million in investment property sales. Yeah, I know a thing or two about this game. And here's the thing, which y'all need to understand, and what a lot of people don't know is uh, in real estate, nationwide, right? I don't know the exact number, but it's around 90% nationwide, annually. 90% turnover, okay? What that means, folks, is if you meet 10 real estate agents this year, next year, probably only one of them is going to continue to be a real estate agent, right? Wow, that's a lot of people failing at the business, okay? So what does that mean for you? It means this guy right here ain't going nowhere, right? All right, I ain't going nowhere. I'm in the 1% of the 1%, and you get my skill set for you. I am your hired gun. I am your freaking assassin. And what I am going to help you do is assassinate these people for a huge, huge screw-up, right? We are going to take advantage of this because they, they done jacked it up. You done screwed up, A.A. Ron, all right? We are going to turn this deal into a bird deal because these people – they screwed the pooch. They flogged the dolphin. They chimmied the changa. I don't have any more. I was trying to think of some. I don't I don't have any more. So I guess I'll just continue with the mathematical equation. <laughs> uh, 618 Brownwell, uh, Lorraine, Ohio, 44052. This thing has been on the market forever. 
153 days. Listed at a pretty low price, 69.9. Should have sold. Okay, should have already sold. I'm going to try to beat them down for you, get an even better price. I'm going to try to pick this thing up for you for 55. Why? Because they screwed this thing up, right? What do we have here? Picture one, picture two, which is just like the dude moving over to the left a little bit, and then picture three, he moved over to the right a little bit. Okay, yeah, great work. The reason, reason this dude's only got three photos of the outside, which is essentially the same photo, just homeboy moved over a couple feet. Is because it's tenant occupied, right? Tenant occupied. Okay? So like two kinds. Two kinds of people in the world that could buy houses. People that want to live in them, people that want to rent them to tenants. I guess theoretically there could be like other types of buyers. Like you could buy it for a marijuana grow house, for instance. Uh you could buy it as a trap house to run uh sexual favors out of. You could uh, sell drugs outside of marijuana, right? You could grow marijuana. Well, you could actually run it as a marijuana grow house, right? But not actually a retail front, right? It could be you know, just your grow front, right? Then you could also run it as a retail establishment, you know, selling all types of great things. Marijuana, heroin, cocaine, crack, ecstasy. Uh, I'm trying to think of some others. I don't, I don't know. Meth. You could cook meth in it, right? You could break him bad, the son of a bitch, right? But more or less, two kinds of buyers. People that want to live there themselves, real estate investors like you, right? And this guy screwed the pooch. Got this tenant-occupied house. No pictures. Don't worry. Not that big a deal. It's often common. Tenants don't like you coming in there, right? So we already know that half the buyer base is gone, right? We're going to assume all the... Trap house and the drug dealers and stuff. We're going to assume they didn't want to buy this house. Now we only have two kinds of buyers. The investors and the people that want to live there. Well, all the people that want to live there, they're gone now. They don't care. They no longer want this house because they can't live in it because it's occupied by a tenant. Right? And then all the investors, what do they care about? Well, they care about how much it's renting for. This dude didn't even bother to put that. Ah, jeez. It's okay, though. Your boy Jay Wise putting in the work for you. Reach out to them. Hey, bruh, you got this tenant-occupied house. You ain't got no pictures. You ain't got no description of the mechanicals. You ain't got no description of anything that's going on. But uh, can you at least give me how much the tenant's paying in rent, right? That might be something I'd want to know, right? Friggin' four or five months ago, I guess, tenant moved out. He's like, yeah, tenant moved out. We don't have a tenant anymore. It's vacant now. All right, and that that is where we take advantage of the fact that 9 out of 10 people ain't going to be real estate agents. Two kinds of people, folks. Two kinds of people could buy this. Investors and owner-occupants, right? Landlords are people that want to live there. All the people that want to live there, they're gone because he never updated his listing. Still listed as a tenant-occupied property with no pictures. So they're all gone because they still think there's a tenant. There ain't. Landlords, after they reach out to them, well, they don't want it anymore either, right? So that's why we're going to try to lowball them, and I think we're going we're gonna to do it. Because at this point, the seller's got to have no faith that their property's ever going to sell. They used to have a tenant paying them rent. Now the tenant's gone. They're 153 days on the market. That's why we're going to hit them for 55 k I think we can get it done, right? I feel like they're getting desperate at this point. Six months into this, they're like, God, dude, what's wrong with my property? Why, why does nobody want my property? It's a good property, most likely. Now, we have, like, no info on the inside, obviously the agent, not much help. All they said was it needs TLC. That's realtor speak, right? TLC stands for tender, love, and care, right? That's realtor speak for it's probably pretty jacked. Uh, 25K is the budget I'm going to put on this. We had somebody living there. 25K, my team can go in and knock out an interior renovation top to bottom, making it look good, right? That's not going to include, like, foundation issues, right? We can go in and cosmetically get the thing Ready to rock and roll, ready to pass Section 8. Floors, walls, new fixtures in the bathroom, matching fixtures, and, like, you know, new-looking cabinetry and appliances in the kitchen, right? One color throughout, most popular color, right? Probably agreeable gray. White trim. Refinished hardwoods throughout. If we don't have hardwoods in there to refinish, we're going to do a vinyl allure flooring, right? Just, you know, a rental. Check out the Cleveland Area Houses for Rent show. Uh, here on Holton Wise TV uh, to see what a lot of our rental properties look like, right? We try to, you know, systemize things, and a lot of them look the same, right? We use a lot of the most popular 
items you can get from suppliers, right? Because that's what appeals to the masses, right? We're going to make it look like that, okay? We could pretty much do that uh, for 25 k Now, that's a ballpark right now, right? We're going to do the inspection. Of course, we're going to make this offer contingent on inspection. If we then find there's other major issues, maybe we need to do a roof. It's okay. I know how much roof costs. That's seven grand. Could be up for negotiation. Maybe we need a furnace, okay? Probably be like three grand. Hot water tank, maybe a grand, right? I can go through that stuff with you, right? If there's a major structural issue in the basement, eh, we're probably going to kill the deal. Probably not going to work. It's going to be cost prohibitive. But 25K more or less, right? So that means we're all in at this thing for 80. It's a four bedroom, meaning we'll be able to get a Section 8 tenant in there for about 12 hundo, right? After you run your fixed and variable expense estimates with my team running the management for you, you should be getting a clear NOI of about 8,100 a year. Now, here's where the good part gets, right? The house in reality now is probably worth about 90K. This is a nice, solid, C-grade neighborhood. We got two brand new naval bases getting built over there. Very, very nice area. Should appraise for about 90, right? Would have no problem selling that for 90. Meaning the bank will give us back 67 and a half, meaning you only leave 12,500 in the deal. That, folks, is the 37.4% return on your money. All because right now the seller's offering it to two kinds of buyers both of which are not happy with the product they're being offered, right? That's what I do. That's why you hire me. I do the deep digging, and I'm freaking polishing turds, turning them into diamonds, right? Other people, you know, through millions of years of, like, pressure, like the earth turns, like, coal and carbon, I think, into diamonds, right? That's how you get diamonds, well, your boy Jay Wise, I don't turn coal into diamonds. I turn turds into money. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.